In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, we're going to crochet the crocodile stitch. My name is Brittany and I'll be your guide throughout this tutorial. For the written instructions and for recommended supplies, please visit BeHookedCrochet.com slash crocodile stitch. Now let's get started right after this. We're going to begin the crocodile stitch by making a slip knot. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to be working up a little swatch. But just know for future projects, the crocodile stitch is worked in multiples of six. So no matter how long your project is, you want to make sure that your final number is a multiple of six. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to chain 36. Once you have the correct number of chains based on the project you're working on, again, I have 36 here is the size of the swatch that I'm making, then you want to add three chains to whatever that final number is. And those three chains are going to count as a double crochet. The first row in this pattern repeat consists of making the foundation for our scales in the crocodile stitch. So we're going to use these three chains as a double crochet, but we want to work in groups of two, so we need to add another stitch to this cluster, or we want to turn it into a cluster. So just make a double crochet in your third chain. So count back one, two, and three, and double crochet into that chain. This part is a little bit confusing because it's a little bit difficult to understand that these two stitches are coming out of the same stitch because we have this foundation. But it'll start to make sense as we go along. So what we want to do from here is chain two, and then skip two chains, and then double crochet two times into that next chain. And then we'll chain two, skip two chains, and make two double crochets in the next chain. And that is our very simple repeat for this row. Chain two, skip two, and two double crochet. Let's go ahead and finish your first row for the swatch or the project that you're working on. Once you've made it to the end of your row, if you've been counting correctly, you should end up with three chains left after this group here. And that's perfect because we're going to skip two and then we'll double crochet two in that last. So I've already made my two chains there. I'll just make two double crochets into that last chain. And now it's easier for us to understand how this side here, these two chains counted as a double crochet. So what we have here is a chain where everything is exactly the same. So we end with two and we started with two. And we have this little grid. This is the foundation for our scale. So let's get started on the next row and then we'll learn how to make the crocodile scales. If you've ever heard of the crocodile stitch or tried it on your own, you probably know that it is unlike any other crochet stitch that you've ever tried to do. We can pretty much throw away the assumption that we're going to be working on top of our next row. So normally we would chain, turn our work, and continue working along the top of the stitches. But that's not the case. We're going to create our scales around these posts. And so things are going to get a little bit weird and a little awkward at first, but if you stick with it, you will find a groove and it'll get easier. To begin, we're going to chain three, and this is going to count as a double crochet. And we want to hold our work this way so that the 
work is coming towards us and that way we can work in this direction here. We're going to work four double crochets around this first stitch here. So we'll just insert our hook underneath it to make our first double crochet. So that's two total because that three chains is counting as a stitch. That would be three. Four. And then five. So this is what your work looks like right now. This is going to be the top of the scale and this is going to be the bottom of the scale or the point. So right now we've come to the point so we're just going to shift our work in this direction and then we'll chain one. Now from here we're going to be working up this post here so just like we did on this side but now we're going to be working in the opposite direction. So what I like to do is fold my work in half so that way that post is just right there easy for me to get to as I turn my work again so it's vertical. Then you'll make five double crochets around that post. And really learning how to hold on to your work and how to rotate it just as I've shown you is the hardest part to learning how to do this stitch. The stitch itself is pretty straightforward. It's just easy to get confused and lost in the stitches. There now if we pull our work out to the side we can see we have made our first scale. So again that's the bottom or the point of the scale. This would be the top. So from here what we need to do is chain one and now we need to turn our work again so that we can work our next scale. So what I want for you to do is take your work and just rotate it in this direction here. Now we've just flipped it upside down and we're ready to proceed with the next scale. We want to skip this next group of two double crochets here and we're going to start working our next scale in this group around this post. So you'll just pick it up and fold it and then rotate it this way. Because when we work the first half of our scale we're working in this direction so we're working down. So once you understand that it's really easy to figure out which way you're supposed to be holding your work. Now you'll just make five double crochets around that stitch And then you'll chain one and then get prepared to work up the other side. So just, you'll keep it folded, but just turn it this direction. So now you can work from here to here on the other half of the scale.
So that is the repeat for this scaled row, but let's go through it one more time. From here, I've just finished that second scale, so I want to chain one. I'm going to skip this group of double crochets, and I want to focus in on these. Now again, as I'm crocheting, I have to be working in this direction, so from here to here. So I'm just going to pinch this group, because that's what I want to work on, and turn my work this way. Now I'm just going to focus in on that first post and make five double crochets there. Then you'll chain one, and then turn your work so that you can work in the post that's right next to it. And you'll double crochet five times. So again, this is the trickiest part of this stitch, is learning how to hold your work and position it so that you can make the scales. If you're struggling a little bit, just give it some time. It's going to take a lot of practice because this is not like the usual stitches that, that you've done in the past. And so that finishes up our third scale. And we just want to repeat that until we reach the end of our row. Once you've reached the end of your row, your work should look something like this, and it's never going to look perfect or neat the first time, and your scales are always going to have bigger gaps on your first row of scales than they will for any of the other ones. So blocking will go a long way when you do finish your project, and I do have a tutorial on how to block, and you can find that at BeHookedCrochet.com slash block your project. And I'll talk about that in more detail over in that tutorial. So it's easiest to catch on to the crocodile stitch if we think of it in terms of two different rows that we're repeating over and over. We have scaled rows and we have foundation rows. So the first row that we did, where we were making two double crochets, chain two, skip two, that's our foundation row. And of course we just finished the scaled row here. It's always going to work in that order. So once you finish a scaled row, we're always going to do a foundation row. And here's how we do a foundation row when we already have a row of scales to work with. What we want to do is chain three, and that's going to count as the first double crochet in our group. And we're going to make our second double crochet in between this scale, like in between the middle of the scale. And then we're going to chain two. And we're going to locate on the back of the work the two that we skipped. So you'll find those, we're going to work our next two in between those two stitches, but we want to do so over top of this because right now this is open and that's going to create a messier work. So I just like to open the scales up from the front and find those two and just pull them apart and then work your two double crochets right in between there and over top of where those scales come together. And then we'll chain two. And we'll put two double crochets in the middle of the next scale.
Now chain two and then find that group underneath. Double crochet twice in between them, locking in those that scale. And that's our repeat. Just go ahead and finish that up until you've reached the end of your row. At the end of our third row, this is what your work should look like. And you've probably noticed from the pictures that the scales are offset. So that means that they're not sitting right on top of each other, but in between each other. The way we need to start off our next row of scales is we need to chain one, but we don't want to work around this group because if we do, then our scales will be on top of each other rather than in between. So we're just going to, once we have our chain one, just jump over to this next group and just fold your work up. Just get it in your hand so it's easy to hold on to. We're gonna make five double crochet around this first post so that this group here can be our first scale in this row. Then once you have your five double crochet, you'll make a chain one and then you'll turn your work so that you can work up the other side of the scale. Now that finishes off our scale, so we'll chain one and then just lay our work out so we can keep track of where we are. We're going to skip this set here and work into this set of two right here. So that's going to be our next scale. And that's our pattern repeat for this second row of scales that we have here. Once you've reached the end of your row, you've probably noticed that we have this little opening here. And, and it's actually supposed to be there, so don't worry about that. All we want to do is just turn our work so that we're looking at it from the back. And make a slip stitch in between. So there's a double crochet, there's the chain that we made just slip stitch into that space. I'm going to get you started on the next foundation row, but know that everything is a repeat from here on out. Since we have an offset here, our next row, we're gonna have a scale that comes in right here. And so we're gonna start our foundation with a chain three, and then we wanna double crochet in that same space where we made the slip stitch. And that is going to be the framework for the scale that's gonna sit right there. 
we'll chain two and put two double crochet in between that next scale. Chain two and then find that group underneath double crochet two in between there and over top of this okay and so that's our repeat now all you'll do to finish working up either your swatch if you're working with me or your project is you'll just continue repeating what we have covered here so remember you're going to have a foundation row and then a scaled row and know that your scales are always going to be offset from each other and another question I know you guys are having is how to make it look neat and finger blocking and wet blocking that's what I typically use so you see here I'm just finger blocking stretching the stitches out and kind of forcing them into place and even flattening it out is going to make a huge difference and then wet blocking I would just lay your project out or your swatch out on a flat surface something that is waterproof so I like to use athletic flooring tiles and then you can just pin the scales down pin them where you want them to go and then saturate it with just some lukewarm tap water and then let it air dry overnight that's going to be your golden ticket to having perfect crocodile scales once you've worked a few more rows of your crocodile stitch pattern, your swatch should look something like this. Now you'll just keep going until your project is the size that you want or until you feel like you have enough practice to work a full project using this stitch. Now this wraps up our tutorial, but I do want to remind you one more time the link where you can get the written instructions for this stitch. You can find that at BeHookedCrochet.com slash crocodile stitch. One more thing before we go, I don't usually ask for this very often, but if you do receive any amount of value with my tutorials, and if you, if you like them, if you've learned a lot from me over the past months or weeks or even years that I've been doing this, if you could just share my tutorials with one of your friends, somebody that you think might really enjoy crochet and could benefit from my teaching techniques. I'm so grateful for you and I really just want to make sure you know how much I appreciate you and your support. Until next time, I'll see you soon. <laughs>